Okay, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Open Active Adoption Engagement Forum on 8th of December 2023, uh, the last one of um, 2023 before the, the holiday break. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, usual reminder um, for everyone here, I don't think needs reminding, but if there's anyone who happens to come across this recording and you're new to Open Active, then please do join our, our Slack workspace. Um, oh. Um, a quick look at what we have on the agenda today or what we had planned on the agenda today. We're, we're sort of fairly fairly um, intimate on numbers, so we'll see how we get on. But um, Andrew's here to give us a bit of an update on the W3C community group um, and how that's been going recently um, and kind of plans for that um, uh, moving into the new year. Um, and then we're also planning to sort of have a kind of collaborative retrospective looking back at, at the year how it's gone and um, what successes we've had, what challenges we've had um, as a community. Um, and also, again, a, a bit of a look forward to, to, the, new, to the new year as well. But we'll, we'll see how we get on with the uh, agenda and how it goes. Um, and yeah, we, we might not fill the, um, the full hour, but um, if there's any other topics or, or anything that the people on the call would like to discuss, then um, I think we'll be fairly flexible on time and, and we'll have some, some time available if, if there's anything that comes up. Um, so with that, I will hand over to you, Andrew. Sorry, Andrew, you're muted. Hmm. Sorry, Tim. Um, so, so I don't think I'm going to need too long to talk about the W3C, um, but I just thought it'd be useful to provide an update to the AEF on, on the kind of status of the W3C group and, and what, it's, what it's working on at the moment. Um, so for, for a while now, we've had a, a, a bit of an issue with the W3C community group in that we haven't got very big audiences in attendance at, at the group. Um, and that's making it really difficult for us to um, set priorities and to deliver work to improve the specifications that underpin open active and we've had a couple of attempts at kind of reinvigorating the w3c um, and we've had mixed results um, the group last met i think at the end uh, kind of towards the middle of october um, and at that meeting we decided to tweak a few things so the first thing that we tweaked was the meeting frequency. So the W3C met fortnightly like this group, um, but the plan is that actually moving forward, it's going to meet on a monthly basis. Uh, we think that will give more time between meetings to enable the group to take actions and to discharge actions. Um, I think the second observation that we had on the group was that it had become more of a more of a technology group than a specification group. And when we looked at the terms of reference, it was quite clear that the W3C group should be solely focusing on the data specifications and change to the data specifications. It started to focus a bit too much on infrastructure rather than specifications. And they're, they're really closely linked, right? They're, they're, they're meshed together. Uh, but actually we wanna pull the group back to focus on the specifications. Um, and then we've had a few conversations, including a conversation at this group about what the priorities should be for the W3C. Um, and a couple of things came through quite loudly that we, the first thing was that we should avoid changing the specifications, um, but actually we probably need to provide people more help in adopting the specifications in different use cases. Um, and uh, that any change really needs to be carefully justified because it had knock on implications for people providing booking systems. Um, and that actually the, the group wanted some focus. So the, the plan that we, came up with was that actually the, the W3C would focus on perhaps one or two big issues at a time and uh, spend kind of three to three, three and six months looking at those issues and have a kind of a, a programmatic approach to dealing with issues. And the first two issues that we looked at, uh, decided to look at were open referral integration and uh, using open active uh, to, to build club finders. Um, I'm really glad Darren's here because he's re he's been doing the work on Club Finder, so we can talk to Darren a bit, get Darren to talk a bit to that. Um, so we had the W3C meeting in October. We started talking about open referral. Uh, London Sport have done some nice work around um, taking open active data and transforming it into open referral data, which then means that that data is available in 
um, social prescribing systems that consume open referral data. We started, and then as soon as we started, open referral was successful in getting some funding from the Department for Leveling Up to look at in, increasing the speed of adoption of open referral. And uh, actually, it seemed sensible to pause that work until we knew what the outcomes of that, 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 that deal up work were, because it might have knock on consequences for open referral and therefore open active. So, so we haven't taken the open referral work forward very far. Uh, and I want to pick that up after Christmas. Uh, the, the second bit, which we thought was the more straightforward bit, the club find a bit, um, we, we have done some work on. So Darren's done a really good job of um, defining a use case for building a club finder using using Open Active. Um, and broadly, that is that as an activity provider or facility provider or sporting body, um, uh, you, you, I'd like to share my data about the, the location uh, or clubs that are in my uh, in my purview. Um, so that would uh, mean that then people building third party applications would be able to bring in the locations of I don't know, all the football clubs, all the archery clubs, all the swimming clubs in their in their in their location. In even if those clubs don't have um, activity level data, um, to test whether it's actually viable to use the specifications in that way, um, Darren built a an alpha app, uh, I think, in Google Sheets, which essentially lets you list the the names and addresses of your clubs, um, and then it it spits out um, open active compliant data based on what you've put into the sheet. Uh, Darren, is there anything you'd add on club finders? Um, yeah, no, that's just a good summary. Um, basically, that it was. We had a look at the, the specifications and the wording of the de developer documentation and realized that all the essential uh, moving parts are, are there. In fact, a lot of them aren't, aren't really moving parts. That's the point of the club fighter information is that it's static information rather than dynamic information. So as long as you have an or a combination of an organizer and a location, and one organizer can be looking after multiple locations, that's fine, then that is uh, essentially what can be regarded as a club. Um, but the way in which the developer documentation is currently worded um, makes it look to newcomers and veterans alike that this dynamic time information, the kind of event series level information, is required in open active data. Um, but technically, there's uh, nothing stopping a system not having that time information and just allowing the organizer and location information. So a tweak to the wording instantly opens up a range of um, lower kind of hanging fruit for, for people to, to uh, enter Springboard into Open Active if that's all they want to release. Um, and that's the proposal. That's it. You know, adjust the guidelines, the technology's there. And I made a little open um, kind of sandbox Google Sheets type platform with an API that reads um, those Google Sheets. So it just proves that people can, in fact, be their own. Um, so clubs can be their own data publisher if they have a Google account. They put the, 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 their sheets, which are formatted in open active fashion. I've got templates for all, all of that, of course, online. They send us the address of those sheets and we have an API that goes and reads them, collates them all together, maybe on a nightly basis and spits them out as a single feed. Um, so the text there, uh, the guidelines are there, just needs a couple of tweaks here and there and to make sure that it's not putting anyone's noses out of joint for whatever particular reason. Um, but it's not, um, above and beyond possibility. Yeah. Thanks, Darren. So, so, so I think the next steps with that are to have that that kind of approval discussion with the W3C group, and we'll do that in the new year. Um, and I think I think the other thing that we are really keen to do with W3C and with this group is actually try and do some work to reinvigorate the groups. Um, and uh, we will. We we have a few thoughts on what that might look like. Um, which we might be able to come on to a bit later. But I think that's all I wanted to say, Tim. Yeah, that's great. No, thank you. I think that was a really useful update. Um, I guess as uh, we've got, you know, we're, we're fairly flexible on time today, so I, I think we can open up the floor to to questions. I, I know Tom has some some thoughts on on kind of club finders and things, which I, we've spoken to him before, um, and I can sense that Jules is is itching to jump in. And uh, yeah, Jules, uh, Jules has put his ask, hand up. He's, ask him he's very polite. Well. So, yeah, <laughs> if we go to Jules first. Uh, yeah, Darren, this 
this seems to blow the whole system wide open, doesn't it? Because if people can publish their own club location on a smart sheet themselves, then they could do that with activities as well. Yes. Um, that would be a natural extension of what we currently have. Yeah. I mean, then that just invites the question, what is the date, the open active data ecosystem supposed to supposed to comprise of who defines that? Um, maybe it is that certain people are happy to get their hands a little bit messy on that kind of things. It requires a little bit of understanding of the structure, but it's, we will obviously have um, tutorials as clear as possible to have people what is realized in terms of recommended required and optional components of that because at um, the moment uh, you need to go through either uh open sessions or sports suite or another thing to be published because right. open in only living an open active finder needs to know where to look so there's yeah. a, a kind of there's that status sheet of all the people publishing data yeah. with maybe 50 people on it if that becomes fifty thousand, yeah that's going to be a a challenge but I'm sure there'll be an API for it. Yeah, and um, and then of course, in the way in the manner in which it's it's currently there, you know, it's, it's only a prototype. I was partly playing around with what is possible from Google Sheets. Just um, anyone can make a Google Sheet which is open to another human, and in just the same way, you can make it open to a uh, to a robot to an API account which sits there, and um, and then that has unique access to that. But then of course you are then tied into the Google system and um, which the Google APIs and spreadsheet APIs have been around for like 10 years. There's probably relatively low chance that they're going to be disappearing at any point, anytime soon. But if this were to become, you know, a big thing, we would probably be wise to have a conversation with Google and say, hey, we've developed a bit of core infrastructure for OpenActive and your systems are intrinsically a part of that. Um, can we have some guarantees or a further conversation? So when it does get out of the toy box into, you know, people's organizations are, are actually relying on that, it would be very wise, I think, to have to try and reach out to Google, have that conversation, show them what we've got, get their advice and any um, assurances that they can give us that things aren't going to be changing anytime soon. It is a low probability, but it's certainly not zero. You know, anything can change with these systems. There's a, also looking at maybe Facebook as well, because there's a lot of data that goes on of activities that people say, well, I go there. I don't go to a finder. There's That might be another source of solutions and problems. Who knows? I don't know. It's um, yeah, we're, we're certainly getting into the weeds there, out into the, the, the greater territory. But the, just for the functionality, um, the functionality is there. And um, yeah, so the hopefully we'll get that into at least um have some more eyes on it uh, in the new year um so the code and the functionality maybe have a few people testing it and then we can get some feedback and say would you actually like this is it more or less useful than the way in which you're currently um producing information at least at that club level combination of organized and location then who knows maybe we can have the um event based time series information conversation after that it's certainly a bigger discussion and um again we would probably be, be wise to involve the people who are doing that on their own platforms you know people who um activity providers approach in order to have their data published so um yeah genuinely exciting stuff great it's good to hear that Thanks, Darren and Jules. Uh, Tom or Grace, did you um, have any questions or thoughts for either Darren or Andrew or Jules or me? I mean, <laughs> from my perspective, I think it's good progress. I think what we've looked at in the past is, um, well, I think Open Active's focus on opportunities is kind of the key differentiator from what's been done in the past. And we see club, it's, it gets a bit nuanced with clubs, whether they're a physical location or a group of people that operate in multiple locations. So it's, I think, hard to, it's always been difficult to define what a club really is. And we have tended to re refer to them as providers, and which I think in the open active spec would be the equivalent of organizers. And then in terms of a search experience, 
we it's a way in to find opportunities at that club but i still think without opportunities um the general list of club finders uh, don't from again I'm, I'm happy to to learn new information but i'm not sure how widely used they are or useful to the user um without opportunities connected to them if there's a way that there's a call to action within like if you look at i guess my point is is how, what's the implementation of this that can help augment the data that already exists or help people take part in sport and physical activity because i still think the friction that's there if it's a list with a number and stuff like that is from what we understand not it's too much friction still for someone to take part it's still not a live opportunity and i think the open actives what 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 this is always been about and what people resonate with is is live opportunities to take part in sport and physical activity um, but there's definitely a use case where people list the clubs and then the opportunities get associated to the clubs etc and i think that's a, a nice step to kind of bringing it together I, th I think your point about steps is really important so so one so, so i've been here for for a year and three days now time flies when you're having fun right mm -hmm. um and I think one of the things that I found when I came to Open Active Fresh, and I've got a bit of a data standards background, is that actually you, you come to the guidance as a, a potential adopter, and it's really comprehensive, which is brilliant, but it's really comprehensive, which means that it's hard to work out what you should do first. Uh, and one of the things that I've been thinking about um, and, and that we're going to do some more work on is that, that kind of adoption journey for publishers and consumers of Open Active. So if you're if you're coming to open active what can you do really quickly to get started to publish some data and then from that that seed how do you then develop into a kind of um, mature open data publisher that's publishing opportunities and how do you then move from that to a, a, a publisher who's publishing opportunities and who's publishing making those bookable so so for me it's about that that adoption roadmap um, and having a really clear adoption roadmap for publishers um, but also having a really clear publish uh, uh, adoption roadmap for people trying to consume the data as well. So I, I kind of see this club finder could be a really good first step for newcomers to Open Active, and then we can take them and support them on that journey to kind of full compliance at some point in their future. So, yeah, just to bring that back to kind of something we're working on, which is an example in golf, where it's a similar sort of journey where basically working with England Golf, they're listing all of the providers. So it could be a club, could be a coach, could be any sort of location or any provider of opportunities. There's like a provider page if they haven't added opportunities yet with a call to action, register interests that then triggers, hey, you should upload opportunities. And then that once that's done, upload, upload actual times um, or yeah, bookable opportunities. So it's like, I agree with having an approach that removes friction in the like the M MVP form of taking part in Open Active, and then leveraging that to kind of get people to take the next step. Yeah, I think that's a good approach. I'm happy to share any kind of insights around that approach. Yeah, that might be good. We might set up something in the new year. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Jules, well, Jules are you something? something? I'm always on mute. Apologies. <laughs> uh, with the directory, the one thing I kept going back to is using Active Places site IDs as a way of deduplicating multiples. I haven't checked the database, but is there enough club? I know they have about ninety percent of the venues. Have they got the club details as well? Do we know? Um, I, as far as I'm aware active places is mainly just facility data and doesn't really have much club data but i I, might, <laughs> I haven't really looked at active places data much so it's my understanding stuff. my understanding is it it has the details of the facilities but not who uses the facilities i guess the one exam one exception to that might be if i don't know um an archery club was the only person at the facility you might be able to infer that the archery club belonged the facility belonged to the archery club but i don't think it's any way i don't think it's a robust data set i think just yeah having def it's 
again confuses me so it doesn't i'm not surprised it confuses like providers in terms of like um what what the definition of a club is what the definition of a place is what the definition of a facility is they're all fairly like similar in some ways but different in a lot of ways and i know there are definitions out there but i think what our customers tend to find is there gets to be a bit of confusion around like who to engage with whether it's and what these relationships are to each other um so i think having a in terms of thinking about it of bringing it more to the engagement side is like who exists like if your target if you're speaking to clubs this is what you ask them to do if you're speaking to uh coach so this is what you're uh, so and so forth so it's a bit more clear on i guess how the data relates to each other and like having a bit of a clear message around how they can how others can adopt because i do think that's been probably the most difficult thing about adoption has been just the uh, it's not easy enough to adopt for the end of the provider and it's not easy to communicate how to adopt for to the champions of open active around the country so i think it'd be interesting to look at yeah like andrew said the journey of adopting open active and actually how we can just remove as much from the actual provider because with clubs right surely there's there's static information it's not is it almost easier for open active to list all of the clubs as a starting point and then get them into the ecosystem without requiring them to upload information like this seems fairly out there already yeah i, th I think i mean a big source of, of that kind of data will be the ngbs i think no, i mean if you pretty much go to any ngb website they'll have a sort of postcode search for find a club near you um in in some form um and so i yeah. think that's that's that could leverage the opportunity that um could engage the ngbs a bit better um yeah because i think that's been difficult for say our active partnership customers where there's no alignment with the ngbs so there's no top-down pressure from adopting open active except for a few that like Babington, England, et cetera, who, because they've bought in, they're pretty, like, you have to adopt Open Active at this point, and they do have leverage over the um, providers in their network. And I do think that getting them on side at a fairly high level and giving options like, oh, this this is like the simple way you can engage with Open Active. Here's the kind of full Open Active adoption from an NGB perspective. And that this maybe this club approach could be a good step towards building a relationship with yeah and that that's exactly what one of the the things we sort of had in, in mind with with sort of investigating uh, this is, is that kind of um and goes back to sort of what we're touching on a little bit ago about you know stepping stones um and rather than it being having to go from in, in a sector where there's there's not you know the, the maturity is still fairly low in terms of data and digital um mm. I mean, from nothing to you know live bookable data is it there's a big that's a big jump so having some of yeah, these yeah. Stepping stones on the way and and as you say a, a hopefully a a way to engage ngbs in particular but possibly other organizations as well that that don't necessarily have kind of live activity or event data because they don't actually run or manage those sessions themselves but they manage a network of providers that do manage those sessions and it's, yeah. it's then a stepping stone hopefully to then getting those providers to um extend to adding that activity data in, in the future yeah can and we... we've just sorry to uh hog the no, uh no, no go for it. too much but the way we are looking at it from the use case I talked to before is to essentially in search provide results based on a location, but a secondary ordering of opportunities. So imagine going somewhere where there wasn't any live opportunities. It would show kind of provider level data, clip level data um, with like a CTA to like register interest, but it's still prioritizing opportunities as like level three 
and then still just making sure that you can still provide some sort of experience that's better than currently if there is a list of clubs and a, a better way to kind of contact them or or take the next step yeah exactly and, and maybe a kind of um tool to be able to use in terms of engaging with organizations and trying to get them to adopt that it, you know there's something a bit more tangible you can maybe show and say you know you, you can see your club being listed here you know you could add your activities as well kind of thing um well I, I think potentially there's there's other use cases for kind of club level data as well beyond um kind of end users finding an activity to be active you know thinking of kind of uh, strategic decision making organizations like an active partnership or a local authority or whatever being able to to map um the the locations of clubs in their in their jurisdictions or, and being able to um you know overlap that data with other data sets like demographic socio-demographic data and, and areas of deprivation and things like that to to be able to kind of focus funding and res other resources and interventions um so yeah, um, possibly some other use cases for that kind of um, club level data as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, just uh, picking up from the chat, just because in case anyone's watching the recording and, and doesn't have access to the chat, Jules has just um, posted a link to active places and a list of um, organization types which are recognized in, in active places. So yeah, possibly something we can dig into a bit more. Um, as I, I think Andrew kind of touched on, I think, the organization types that they list tend to be the kind of facility owners or, or the ones that run the facilities and that's what they're connected to rather than it being a kind of list of clubs that necessarily use those facilities but yeah um as i say i'm, I'm not an expert on active places so <laughs> i don't know a lot so we'd, we'd have to find out from someone who who knows more about that um it's one of these times where you'd hope Sport England would have a database of clubs in England. You'd just hope that yeah that would happen. Yeah, I mean, if they do, then that would be incredible. But I'm I'm not sure that they do. But um, if if they do and um, we can find that, then that that would be a that would be a game changer for sure. Um, the the one other point I'd make about active places um is that although it's a a great sort of facility level data set it is only england that it covers um so um yeah if, when if and when open active were to be looking outside of england then um we probably can't necessarily rely on, on being uh, you know reliant on active places data because that that isn't available in, in other places <laughs> Great. Did anyone have any other thoughts or comments on anything yeah. related to what we've just been talking about? So, um, I guess going back to something you said earlier, Andrew, about the, um, I guess, transformation of open active data to open referral. Um, there's So there is more and more open referral data showing up what's the plan for the kind of reverse of that for being able to transform open referral data into open active data or for the use use like in our use cases to be able to showcase um local non-sport and physical activity opportunities so yeah that's a really interesting question so taking open active data and converting it into open referral data is a relatively simple matter uh, because mm. open active uh, the open active specification captures a broad range of information so you're essentially um, uh, uh, reducing the amount of data um, to go from open active to open referral i think the most uh, the, the best example of that is that in open referral they don't have session series um, they just have um, you can only specify that this event happens every Wednesday you can't say it happens on Wednesday one week and Thursday the next week and so on mm -hmm. um, so, so open referral is a simpler specification than open active so it's quite easy to kind of simplify the data in that direction um, we haven't looked at going in the other direction um, from open referral to open active and, and I think the main reason we haven't is we haven't really seen a use case for doing that um, I, I, I don't know, but I would guess there are a couple of drivers there. So I, I guess if you've opened 
implemented open active it's probably not a lot of work to implement open referral because it's a simpler specification so you would just yeah. consume the feed from open referral um and and we've been very much looking at how we can build activity data into those kind of social prescribing um systems that we haven't really been looking in the other direction so, so but, but we haven't if there's a use case then we can probably think about looking at it but I think right now the priority has really got to be making the sport and physical activity data available to those people who are are, are doing that prescribing work. Um, I, I think what I would say is that London Sport have they've had some success at this. They've they've successfully got a process that takes all of the data in um, open sessions and converts it into open referral data, and they have a stable open referral feed coming out of open sessions. So if you go and have a look at the open referral website. Uh, the biggest feed on there is now open sessions so yeah. if you want to if you want to use that data you, you can um london sports are really interesting because to build their feed for london they're having to take all of the open active data from all of the feeds into their database mm -hmm. and at the moment they're basically filtering it for london and just yeah. putting the london stuff into the feed but they're quite open to the idea of actually just taking all of the data that they have to process and not filtering it for london and publishing it as open referral data so it might be that actually uh, london sport become an aggregator and publish the open referral feed for open active as a whole um, but i think there's a discussion or two to have around that with them yeah so our, the use case that we're exploring is kind of the ability to yeah showcase more than sport and physical activity i mean we might yeah. it might not be feasible if the amount of data or like if the quality of data isn't consistent like it i'm a little bit opaque like what it actually would look like in situ but yeah, yeah. So, so we know we know the department for education through uh there's a big program called family hubs which is one of the conservative kind of pre-election priority shiny things um mm. and, and family hubs are basically about connecting families uh to services that can support them um, and there are going to be some physical family hubs uh, a bit like short sure start centers but not like short sure start centers we shouldn't say that um, mm. but also they're going to kind of have virtual hubs where there will be people placed in i don't know schools uh, gp practice community centers um, and the way that those are being run is that they're building a kind of online tool to allow, allow those those family hub link workers to find um services that are local to them that they can refer to and they're trying to use the open referral data and, and they, they've got quite a long way with that um, but they're hitting all of the problems that you would expect so they've got problems with the kind of coverage of the data uh, the open referral data they've got problems with the quality of the open referral data and they've got problems with the consistency of the data um, and, and I, I think that's one of the challenges that these sorts of initiatives face um, it is is, is that kind of consistency completeness question and, and, and it's interesting they're finding that with open referral um, and they're finding it with with open active as well so they're looking at whether they can bring open active data into that that, that referral service um, so yeah I, I think there's still quite a long way to go in both initiatives in terms of data quality and data coverage cool and, and um and Sports England are really keen that in the future we take a use case based approach so we try and improve the completeness and the coverage to address a specific use case um, rather than trying to get all of the data um, I, I think that's quite a nice idea and one we're going to be exploring yeah because for our use case for example it would not be all open referral data it would be stuff that would be consistent like yeah open stuff and, and event-based yeah. stuff really Cool. Thank you. Um, uh, any other points? Well, I think I'll just um add one point that's come up a couple of times in what Andrew's been saying. But London Sport are working on a few different things, including um open referral and also uh club finder um related stuff. Um, and we've been working with them to try and align the stuff we've been working on, which Darren has outlined with with the work that they're doing as well. And we're hoping to have um someone or 
a few people from London Sport along to a meeting in the new year to to talk about that, but they're they're not quite in a position at, at the moment um, to be able to sort of talk about what they're doing in detail. So yeah, hopefully we'll get them along in the new year to to talk about that. So so people are um, kind of aware of what what they've been working on and what they've been up to and and can find out more about it. So um, just sorry, to, I'm sorry, I know I'm talking way too much. So I'll I'll no, keep it list, but it's interesting. So might make sense, Darren to catch up i don't think we've met yet so hi by the way um tom but for badminton england for example like we have had to kind of build two tools one which is for opportunities and one which is for club and coach finder um just due to where the data sits and it not being open active compliance so um it's currently pulling out of their membership system but I personally feel that lack, there's a lack of good uh, detail that actually is useful to someone who wants to kind of engage with that club. So it'd be useful to try and maybe use that as a use case to get the club based data experience better. And uh, they'd be pretty up for exploring that, I think. Cool. Yeah, that's great. I mean, maybe um, you, we'll have a conversation in the new year, yes, and uh, yeah. you can be one of our early testers and give us some feedback. Does this suit your needs? And, yeah, uh, we, no, we can take it from there. Yeah. Nice. All right. Awesome. Brilliant. Uh, Grace, did you have any thoughts? I don't want to uh, put you on the spot, but yeah. I, didn't want you, I also don't want you to feel like uh, you, you haven't had the chance to say anything. No, no, it's just good to listen and, and know what's going on. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, no problem at all. Um, right. So um, the other thing we had, we've only got about 15 minutes left now, but the, the other thing we sort of had in mind was to have a bit of a, a chat or reflection on um, how this year has gone, both um, specifically around the AEF, but also around the, the initiative more broadly. Um, any thoughts on things that have gone well and successes um, and on the flip side, what what hasn't been gone so well or maybe some challenges and things that people have experienced um and then also have a bit of a look forward to next year um uh what you know what people are hoping for and uh, if, if there's anything in, in particular or any um anything any areas of focus or any particular things that, that people are interested in or, or would like to see happen in the new year Obviously, we can't. We can't. It's not, it's not a wish list. We can't. We can't promise to to do everything that everybody everybody wants. Everybody asks for. But um, I think it's really useful to um, hear um, hear people's thoughts. Um, we uh, we have got a, a what it's called a Google Jam board, which is a sort of post-it note type tool, which I'm sure all of you have used a sort of version of <laughs> of some form. Um, which I'll put the link in the chat. And if you're watching on the recording, I'll put the link in the description of the recording as well. Um, as there's only a few of us, I think rather than sort of breaking out and and um, and kind of taking time to put, put things in and, and we, we're short on time, um, uh, I suggest either maybe we could have a quick discussion if, if there's any um, immediate things that spring to people's mind. Um, or um, happy for people to take uh, take this away and and add um, thoughts and comments uh, and post it notes in your in your own time, um, kind of offline or away from this meeting and and um, yeah I, sh I, sh I can share the the link to the Jamboard and and sort of Slack and things as well to give other people who aren't on the call the opportunity to to contribute to it as well. Um, so yeah, o open for uh, how how people are feeling whether you've got any initial things that you want to to throw in there um, that, that spring to mind immediately or, or whether you'd like a bit of an opportunity to take some time and um, to, to take it away and kind of reflect and, and have a few weeks before the new year to, to add your thoughts to it um, offline. So um, I think from my perspective, the kind of key learning from this year has been, I touched on it a little bit before, but just, I think, where we sit as kind of looking at open active from a few different perspectives, technical engagement, et cetera. I think where we the way that open active communicates open active to everyone is fairly technical and even down to the 
principle of open data um, when discussing with smaller organizers like providers or anyone that we're encouraging to open their data. And more frequent, more recently, um, when I've been talking to clubs or engaging on that side, what I've personally found works well is not even to specifically mention what open data, like the back background of open data, but more of a way that they can showcase, like share their activities across more places and it being more of a, a promotional tool. And here's a way that you can achieve this outcome rather than how, what, what actually the technical reasons are um and i think that having some sort of consistent i know there are um kind of resources for that but just a shared approach that can then be shared to the champions of open active when describing it because it tends to get confusing for people and tends to get when it's actually pretty simple it's just like list your activities on one of these tools and they will be featured here here and here and you don't need to keep updating all these different websites and stuff that you did before. Um, and so I think that's maybe something worth looking at as part of that kind of engagement experience and how that can be refined. But yeah, just simplifies always the, uh, the message. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. And it, it's something we've sort of been thinking a little bit kind of within the ODI team, but we haven't got to a point where we've been able to to kind of broadcast it wider but um yeah re reviewing those kind of different pathways and a lot of the open active website and documentation and things is very um it's quite like as you say very technical and aimed more at kind of developers um whereas a lot of the real kind of providers who own the data and the people who actually want to use the data like a uh, active partnership or who or ngb or whoever um aren't the ones who have that technical knowledge or capacity or, or you know within their organizations that they they want to be able to get the benefits of publishing the data or using the data but they need a supplier or a, a system provider to be able to to do that kind of technical work with the documentation so that their kind of journey for them to go through open active isn't quite right at the moment um and yeah, what one aspect of that is really improving the kind of what has been called the marketplace. Um, um, but I'm not sure that's the best term, but the kind of system providers guide of being able to demonstrate to people wanting to get involved with Open Active who the suppliers are in the marketplace and what the services that they offer offer are and being better able to connect people to those um, is, is going to be a really, really important thing to to try and do better um in the future i think yeah i think it's yeah selling that what the benefit and the outcome is more clearly and then like creating that okay i want this outcome okay here's how you get it and that's just a yeah here are the organizations that can help you to do that the, the yeah, challenge even we... that's not that easy to be honest if it's mm. like people look at seven systems or whatever is that it gets uh yeah it's, I, it's, I, it's really I agree and I, I think um it's hard to be able to compare different systems. So I, I, I think it'd be it'd be good to better define what the different services that people offer are in in as simple terms as possible, um, and be able to, you know, people be able to compare the different organisations that do those different services. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not an easy one to to solve because it's um yeah it's it's trying to simplify something which isn't simple <laughs> but yeah it's something that we're, we've got in mind that we we need to try and do better definitely yeah the Jules, possibility of going to jump in yes yeah, so the possibility of google just just seems to blow so much wide open because you know my boss often say well if i want to find something near me i just google it and good but google only works if the data's clean if you google the name of a film because the data is clean somewhere it will show right this is what it is and there's this is where it's showing and this is where you can book it so actually having an, an open way of using google say a small club could use google calendars as then to show what its sessions are that's an accessible free resource they can quite simply sign up to and then if that suddenly feeds into the larger open active data ecosystem that's massive cool I think uh, just to sort of add to that as well, 
I would say that um, it's an interesting point in the history of the initiative from what I'm aware. I mean, uh, as you know, I've only been with the um, Open Active for a year. I've been with o ODI for, for, for two years, but only uh, with Open Active for half of that. Um, but the initiative is, what, five, six-ish years old? Seven, maybe? Eight now? Crikey, it's getting... Uh, 2015 are my earliest emails with IMEN. Right, okay. And at what point would you say that there was actually sort of uh, live functionality, though? I mean, at that point, 2018, or... right. So it's still relatively young initiative. And all those great features um, that you mentioned, like from Google, have taken at this point now um, a, a good couple of decades to work through. So um, certainly Open Active is out of its teething stage, but it's maybe now in its kind of teen years. So there's still um, like growth and evolution to go. And it's it's really important to, to hold on to the idea of that dream, that idea of that potential. And at this point to um, not get too disheartened by the things which we are rightfully critical of the, of the system for and to say, yeah, you know, it could be that, you know, easy grab and go plugin type thing that we see in Google for other things like movies and, and, and whatnot. Um, even like looking at often you get like a little Wikipedia capture if you Google something, but that's only because Wikipedia has had thousands of people working for like the last few decades to format data in just such a way, which is now only even being translated from the, the standard human readable Wikipedia pages into Wikidata, which is again like a, a multiple year long journey to actually make it super clean to enable that. So that's only really happening now. And that um, equivalent slickness and ease of use and interoperability of, of open active we're kind of standing on shoulders of giants because we've seen what's possible we've seen what they do now it's a, a matter about um getting past our early kind of teething stages into our teen years and holding on to that and just pushing for that dream um especially when you do have sort of newcomers coming from the developers side of things we're trying to lock down and consolidate our um understanding journeys you know um howard our tech lead myself as well we've experienced the same kind of journeys that other developers do so we've gone through the confusion we've read the docs we've said why is that like that and shouldn't that be simpler and so on and we're very much focused and aimed um over the the, the, the coming months and years on taking that and simplifying you know simplifying is probably one of the main words that we use in most of our meetings and just making it clear uh, it doesn't have to be hard um but it just takes that critical mass of knowledge that any one individual needs and say all right i know enough to well to be able to sort of make some actionable steps with this now you know it took me uh, nearly a year's worth of understanding to get to the point where i could make that cop finder tool um and that's not just from understanding open active but understanding other code systems too so it takes time um we hold on to that dream we know what it can be and um, we just need to keep pushing and having these meetings and, and adding layer after layer and then consolidating it, making it less messy um, and just making it a little bit more crystalline. Is that, that that's a really interesting um, perspective, Darren and Jules. Um, from my, well, I just kind of thought about it a bit more now, but um, is there another example of kind of a successful open data project where it's, because what I feel like for the sport and physical activity industry is that we're not opening existing data with almost, they weren't, it's going from offline, like no data, just pen and paper to then online and open in like one jump. And I feel like the message I've been, you're kind of trying to get a digital transformation and open data boxed into the one initiative, which... I feel like is part of why it's like adopting technology, adopting digital is kind of step one and and then making sense of the data is kind of step two. So I think like broadly speaking, I, f I don't know whether there's been a use case where people just listing data and then it gets kind of done afterwards or if it's a byproduct of systems that are already widely adopted, um, which I think is the case from from all of the yeah, I think you could probably find multiple examples across um, the, the sort of spectrum. You know, a couple of things that, that sort of spring to mind from um, other experience with Open uh, with the Open Data Institute. Um, there's an organization called Open Corporates. So that releases um, information about companies. Um, mm -hmm. And that was 
relatively successful relatively quickly and they managed to produce a very slick system which became um greatly adopted by a number of organizations globally uh, in a relatively short space of time but how did they do that that's because a lot of the org uh, the data itself actually already existed in quite a well nice structured format such as companies house and things like that and that's mm. because of the digital transformations that have happened throughout government going right back into the sort of 90s and 80s and so on so it was already a relatively mature um, stage so then when open, open corporates came along they could already riff off and grab something which was almost in a kind of um, ready to go state so as you mentioned open active is coming from a different different side of things with looking to these other areas and say well hey they've done that and they've done that but it's it's the like I said pen and paper to digital and digital to sort of open data has happened in varying ways from sector to sector um and yeah it's I always think of these things that you know, a little bit like a zoo you know you can say animals are animals but, uh, but even if most animals have two eyes two ears and a tail and whatever there's still huge variation between a giraffe and an antelope and an armadillo or whatever they all have their own unique evolutionary paths and uh, that's what makes it interesting as well at the end of the day as well as providing us with challenges the data zoo is my favorite metaphor yeah i, I probably want to go to the... <laughs> right, yeah, want... if you met your uh yeah the family wants to go for a day out and <laughs> they want to see fish and they want to see birds and they want to see tigers and you can't keep them all in the same thing so the data zoo metaphor is one of my favorites <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that seems like a, a good good point to end on, on uh, the wonderful image of a data zoo. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're just coming to time. So um, uh, I guess we can we can leave it there. Thank, thank you all for joining. I'd really encourage you, if you do get the chance to um, add any thoughts you have or, or have a bit of a think um, and add anything to that, that jamble, because we would really value um, hearing your thoughts and hearing thoughts from a, as diverse a a group of people across um open active as possible so yeah we'd, we'd really appreciate it if you do get the chance to to throw anything into there um if you get a moment um and i'd like to wish you all a happy holiday period um hope hope you have a nice relaxing break um and if you if you do get some time off hope hope you all do and um yeah we look forward to seeing you all again in the in the new year and um and carrying on the good fight awesome Happy Christmas, everyone. Yes, Cheers, indeed. Have a good Cheers, holiday. Bye. Bye. Bye.